Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. It's late on Friday afternoon and I should have finished for the day really, but um, I'm busy all weekend so if I don't do these now it's going to be into next week and I've got other things to do next week. So I thought we'd get on with them. Um, now these are more like a repot of a shop-bought Phalaenopsis that you might do yourself. I mean obviously the Phalaenopsis that I've already repotted once, when we come to repot those the next time round, they're pretty straightforward really, <laughs> you know, because the media won't have gone off, um, it won't be soggy, and there should be reasonable roots, so it's just a matter of old media off, new media on. Um, very straightforward. However, these have been relatively recently purchased, and um, as a consequence they're not in my media. And when we looked at these the other day, it did actually look like there was a, a bit of a problem in the root area. I'm just looking for blooms that are going over. Now I've got a, I don't mind leaving some on, but a fair few of these are just falling when I touch them. So they're on their way out anyway. I'm wondering whether to take the spikes off. But first job is let's get it out to see what we're dealing with. There we go. Right. Two plants and both of them are in a plug. Um, and if that stays there, um, the roots will definitely go. So let's get the stakes out of the way and the clips out of the way. Right, so we do have two separate plants, but uh, oh, hang on, there's another stake round here. <laughs> extra spike I'd missed. A little one tucked in amongst the others. Yeah so I mean this is the sort of thing you will come across. The mass producer wherever, Holland, Germany, whichever, but in the EU, um, that will have produced these, their methodology is to use these um, plugs these and when they pop them up pop them on they don't take them off now luckily that one's coming off very easily and hasn't actually completely broken down yet however it holds far too much water for the environment that I'm keeping them in you know when you're keeping them in uh, 28 degrees um, you know with 12 hour day lengths then you know that sort of uh, that sort of thing's okay right we've got a couple of um, dead aerial roots there's no point in leaving those on a couple of tips that are no good apart from that there's a broken one there that uh, just as well come off right so most of what's left is okay it shows signs of being too wet um, this yellowy greeny colour rather than the silvery colour but that will be as a consequence there's a bad root there I know it's got a shoot but it's bad up here so that's better off so that's a small but not bad root system and what I'm going to do is this leaf down here I'm going to take off and this leaf here I'm going to take off and this leaf here I'm going to take off. That's better. Now I can pop this deeper and these roots will be just in the surface so they won't be soaking wet. Now we've got three spikes on here. Um, with the disturbance on the roots for the plant to carry on supporting those three spikes is pushing it. So what I'm just going to do is have a look and see which are the most likely See this one's branching, it's got a node down here that looks like it might branch, so you'd think that's the one to keep, well actually that's the one to get rid of, because it's the one that will use the most energy. Now I've got to decide, do I actually want to keep any of these blooms? Well that's got a little extension that might produce another, another bloom on the end of it, that one hasn't, that one's finished, so we'll have that one off too. Right, that gives us a nice little plant to pot up. Yeah, it's got good leaves. This new leaf hasn't grown to its full size yet. That doesn't mean to say it won't. 
but it hasn't yet. Now if it's finished growing then that's it. You'll be relying on the next one to push on. Right, so that's that one. Now this one lost its central leaf but it didn't rot. I don't think it rotted. I think it, uh, well it may have done. All I can do with this is pot it up and see what happens. Now this hasn't got such a good root system. In fact the root system is quite poor. There's lots of dead bits. And um, Well if this one's going to grow um, it's going to have to put all its energy back into the plant. I'm not sure that um, central bit is actually okay but to give it a chance blooms off sorry <laughs> uh, dead aerials make the place look untidy broken ones there's quite a few dead ends anything that just looks bad just doesn't look right take it off it doesn't look right, chances are it isn't. Alright, so it's nowhere near as good a root system on this one. Nonetheless, it has got a root system, I've seen worse. And I've potted Phalaenopsis with less roots than that and they've recovered. So we'll have to wait and see what it does. But, um, if it's lost its crown and its ability, uh, ability to produce a new leaf, then the chances are it's doomed. So that's that one. Um, well, the big one will probably go back in the same pot. I'll have to find another pot for the other one. Right. It's going to be dark soon. The sun is setting. You know, it's, it's, uh, the sun, as it sets, the shadow goes up that tree. It's halfway up the tree already. <laughs> Now I will be getting late winter sun in the garden that I don't get now. The reason being there's a huge tree over there, deciduous, so it will eventually drop its leaves and then the sun will come through the tree. Okay, it will be filtered sun, but it will still come through the tree. And just remember that this one's got a name. Right, what are we dealing with here? This one shouldn't be as bad. That doesn't mean to say it won't be. But this is what I was worried about. These roots have gone, and there's a fair few of them. So I just wanted to get in here and have a look. See, again, it's got that plug in the middle. Probably came from the same place. Which means, given where I got them from, that's two of the traders that I get to see frequently are both buying from the same place. Unless more than one place actually does this with their plants, so that, that's also possible. Now what are we dealing with here then? This spike is coming off, it's got one bloom left, so we want to keep it. So we'll get that one out of the way. Now this one, no, the roots are not good enough. If, if it's got poorly roots, it's going to struggle. Um, once it's got a healthy root system, then you know it's a different ball game altogether at repotting stage. Now again, I want to get this down in the pot reasonably well, and I don't want these small seedling leaves getting buried. They only they only go rotten. Now once I start cutting roots off of here, I've got a horrible feeling there's really not going to be a lot left. But these are gone, gone, gone. Still good, but gone on the end. Again, still good, but gone on the end. Gone. Gone. some of the plug out. It does come out very easily when it's like this though. It's definitely gone. And you. And you. So 
Let's see what falls away now. <laughs> oh, they're falling like, uh, falling like autumn leaves. There's no point in leaving them on if they are all papery and thin and withered like that. Let's just get a... a, a that's what we're dealing with here. Look, there's no, no substance to that root at all. So um, there's no point in leaving it there. Right, we should be down to... You usually find if a root is holding on to media, then it's probably okay. It hasn't completely gone yet. And it doesn't matter if a few bits of media get to stay especially if they're on a route that looks a little bit flimsy but is probably okay because it's better to just leave that old bit of media on there than actually damage the route when you haven't got many anyway. That's it. So that's a lot less than uh, was there originally but it's okay I think. We will see what happens but this is a uh, it should recover okay, it should be okay, but it will take time. You have, you have to bear in mind these plants that come like this from these mass producers with multiple spikes on that have been forced, they are effectively exhausted. They have been pushed into using every little bit of energy within the plant to get them into the state that they want them in to sell them to us. Uh, and that's how it is. Um, that's how those people work and um, there's no good griping about it that that's how it is the way round it is well don't buy from them then and then you stop and think where the hell else am i going to get phalaenopsis from oh no i'll get them from the local garage well, where do you think they came from <laughs> this is the problem in the uk at the moment you know the eu sources have got very very thin you know, and it's only the big ones that, that can send over huge bulk orders um, to distribute around the country, which is what they do. Let's just break this up because it's going to go in the garden. It's a strange material. It's almost, it feels like sponge. Very fine sponge. But, um, you know, it's a, well, it won't be a peat based um, product because as most countries have banned peat, use of peat now. So it'll be a peat substitute product of some sort. Goodness knows what. Huh. Oh well. Anyway, I need to clear up and then I'll be back. I'll have to wash the pots and everything and um, decide whether those pots which are quite large are actually too large or not. Um, and I'll be back. Time go when you're having fun. The sun is now nearly at the top of the tree, so <laughs> it will be getting dark. It still seems quite bright out there because it reflects on that house opposite, which makes it look bright and sunny, but it isn't really. Everywhere else is in shadows. Oh, and it is well nearly tea time. Right, I've got some hard relatively chunky bark here. I've got some smaller, softer bark here and some grow stones. I'm not sure I ought to be adding grow stones to this, but um, well I've got the flipping things haven't I? Now that's the largest plant that is going back in um, a pot like it came out of and it has got roots that are going to go right down to the bottom of the pot. So Get a layer in there so that there is just enough on the bottom of the pot for the media to sit on. Quite honestly, I'm not sure I'm going to use any of the smaller bark. I'll probably just use the chunky stuff. Well, what I could do, I suppose, is um, we use the chunky stuff down in the pot the place where it could potentially stay wet. Um, you know, if electricity gets too expensive and I decide that I'm just going to put eight jumpers on and walk round <laughs> in the duvet cover, <laughs> uh, in which case, you know, the heating's gone off and the plants will suffer. So, uh, but yeah, 
I think what we'll do is we'll use that big stuff to hold it in place and then what we'll do is we'll put some of the smaller stuff round the top of the pot which will stay wet that little bit longer and encourage root growth near the base of the plant. So any root activity that's near the base of the plant will come into bark that it will just stay wet that little bit longer. Not much, but a little bit. Um, and then what we won't have is a soggy bottom in the pot. Right, so that's that one. Now that did come with a, with a label. It's actually Phalaenopsis Fer Ferrara. Is that focused? Probably. Anyway, I've said it. So that's that one done. All that needs now is a flipping good drowning. Um, and I need to do that because this, this media, it lives in the lounge leaning up against the radiator so that there is no damp left in it whatsoever. And in theory, without moisture for that long, any mould spores that might have been in it should in theory be dead because they've had no moisture. That's the theory anyway. Right, so that fits in there quite nicely. Um, I've only put a tiny bit in the bottom, simply because these roots are actually just going to touch the bottom of the pot. So just enough for them to have something to hang on to. And then again, we'll just hold it in place with the big stuff. Make sure if you um, if you get some air gaps when you're you know, when you're doing this with quite large chunks of bark. It's quite easy to get an air gap. You know, you get a little pocket where there's a couple of roots stopping the media getting into like the center of the pot. Don't worry about it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter one little bit. If Phalaenopsis have got some air gaps, have a look in six months time when your roots get going again and see where your roots are. I bet you anything you like, they've headed for that gap. <laughs> seem to like what it is is they basically like air around their roots under normal circumstances they would have a set of aerial roots you know hanging off their trunk or their branch and um, you know they would get some of their nutrients and and um, moisture from the air unfortunately in homes um, there doesn't tend to be sorry there's some strange plinky plonky noises I've got a feeling that was the ice cream van. You know, the van that comes around and plays, plays a little tune to let everybody know. When I was young, that, that tune could start an al almost a riot because every child in every home, unless they were lactose intolerant, was on, on at mum or dad immediately. As soon as that tune came in from the distance, ice cream mum, ice cream mum, and um, under normal circumstances, you've got one. And you all ran out, everybody ran out down their garden paths into the road and queued up nicely to get whatever they wanted. Ice cream, ice lolly. Uh, good old days. When people had a service that was brought to you. Not so much now. I can't even imagine where I'd have to go to get an ice cream nowadays. I know there is a shop in the high street that sells ice cream and it's got like, you know, 50 varieties of ice cream and you have a scoop of whichever one you choose or a couple of scoop, scoops if you're greedy or haven't had one for a long time. <laughs> I know last time I went downtown, I certainly did. Once upon a time, not that one, well, not that long ago, but, um, I took my car in for some work to be done and I had to get the bus home because obviously my car had to stay there. So I had to get the bus home and the bus went through the high street. So the, you know, the repairer was one side of the high street and I lived the other side. And I got off in the high street and sat down and had an ice cream and then got back on the next bus. That's how frequently I can get near an ice cream. Uh. Wobbly, but then it hasn't got many roots, has it? So, there we go. It will soon settle in if it starts to grow some roots. 
Um, right, so there we go. I'll put my um, hard bark back in the bag and not waste it. And, uh, there we go then. We've got one with a lost centre that may just fail. Another one that should be okay, its centre is okay, and it hasn't got bad roots, and there's enough roots there to carry on supporting that small spike with a couple of blooms. And then we've got the, the one that's gone in the larger pot that had the yellow blooms on. The, the roots on that looked bad, but the ones that are left are enough to support that plant, I hope. Um, so, Back on the kitchen windowsill, this is a nuisance isn't it? The kitchen windowsill is virtually full. Where there were two, there are now three. So I'm going to have to shuffle around and see if I can get these back on there somewhere. Mind you, there were two large pots. There's now one large pot and two smaller ones. So maybe it'll work, who knows? Anyway, um, getting Phalaenopsis out of the pot from a store-bought plant I would suggest is done sooner than later. Um, you could see that this one I'd had longer than that one and on this one the roots were failing faster than they were on this one. Um, a lot of it just depends on um, you know whether they've got that sort of plug. Some of them will have sphagnum, a sphagnum moss plug in the middle um, but either way whatever the plug is made of it will be holding water and um, it's come from a nice constant environment with 12 to 13 hour days at 28 degrees and you probably can't compete with that therefore your plant is now under stress purely from the change of environment that's on top of the change of environment from the wholesaler to the auction into a lorry to a staging area probably still in the EU to then some sort of shipment over to the UK possibly to a central area and then on to another environment where it was sold from. These plants are stressed yeah so the sooner you can settle them down and you know let them acclimatize hopefully get them in some media that they'll be happy in the better quite honestly. Um, if you want them long term, if you want to stick with the business model, then as the flowers start to fade, you chuck it in the bin and you go up the road and you buy another one with nice shiny new flowers that will last you two or three months. That's the business model. That's what they want you to do. Right. See you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Tea time. Ah, oh, that was another thing. The discussion arose because I said tea time. Somebody said, I thought tea time was the expression used up north. I didn't expect a southerner to use that expression. We have a problem. We have breakfast, yeah. That's the term that everybody uses. Some people use the term brunch, which is a, like an early lunch, in between breakfast and lunch. Um, I call that greedy, personally, <laughs> if you're going to have lunch as well. But then we get to the 12 to 1 o'clock period, and some people call that lunch. And some people call it dinner. And then we get to the evening period, like five o'clock to seven o'clock, that sort of thing. Now some people call that tea, and some people call that dinner. Those that call that bit dinner have called the midday bit lunch. But I tend to use the word lunch for the middle of the day, but I use tea for the end of the day. I spent a long time, a lot of my time when I worked in IT, up north. Midlands and North and even in Scotland. So you pick up bits that, you know, and I quite like the expression tea. Dinner to me, just because it's indecisive, I know that tea can't be in the middle of the day. It's at the end of the day, so it just works. And lunch can't be at the end of the day, it's in the middle of the day. So lunch and tea for me works. If you include dinner, it's ambiguous. Are you talking about midday or in the evening? So that explains that. And none of it's wrong, it's just different uses of the language in different parts of the country. There we go. See you next time.